recording. Test, test, test. I, yes, we are recording. Welcome everybody. LiveWild.com playing Total War Warhammer. And today we're going to take a look at a uh, battle that took place just a couple of days ago. A really nice battle. Uh, I didn't, I'm not doing this video like the, you know, immediately after the battle. So I, there's some things that I might forget. For example, I don't really remember who won this one. But I remember it being a fun one. So I saved it. So this is uh, Beastman versus Bretonia. I'm bringing here a Beast Lord, a Shaman of the Wild, no, of Beast, excuse me, of Beasts, two Gorbals, one, two, three, four, five, six Gore Herd, two Minotaurs, and one Centigore. Uh, on the other hand, we have Bretonia, King Leon Kerr, two Paladins, uh, immediately I assume probably flying with a Damsel. Uh, one, two, three Men at Arms with Spears, uh, one, two Men at Arms with Pole Arms. One Grail, uh, one Knights of the Realm, four. This is huge. Four um, Mountain Yeoman Archers and two Trebuchets. So a a very tough fight for me because I brought zero range from the get-go. Zero range. Um, on the other hand, he has a lot of range, uh, especially very mobile range, which is going to probably hurt me. So um, let's take a look here at the battle. Uh, we're just finishing up. While we finish up the loading, this is LiveWa.com. Do visit us www.LiveWa.com. That's L-I-V-E-W-A-A-A-A-A-G-H.com. Or just look down here uh, right below the video. Uh, we also stream uh, Twitch live almost every day, so be sure to join us. So let's get going here. So one of the things that he did very nice here in the beginning is he vanguarded up with his mounted Yorman archers so that as soon as I I press uh, you know uh, I think you know play the battle or what you know start the game I can't remember what it says right now um, I was confronted by this so the first thing I had to do from the get-go was go forward in a hurry before we continue here I'm gonna pause for one second Let's take a quick look. So he has his uh, mounted Yorman archers up front. I have a big long line of Gorher with shields. My Centigors uh, had actually initially vanguarded, but as soon as I saw this, I sort of pulled them back. Uh, then on each flank, we're going to have one unit of Minotaurs, one unit of Gorb and one Gorbo. In the middle, the Beast Lord and the Bray Shaman with Beasts. And then a Minotaur and a uh, Gorbo. Uh, on his side, if you can see, he deployed all the way to the back on purpose to try and get as much damage as possible. And he has here Knights of the Realm that are actually hidden. So I did not see these until much later. Three flying units as expected with Leon Kerr and two Paladins on Pegasus. The big line here of spearmen, uh, of men at arms with polearm and, sp and spears, and the two trebuchets, plus a damsel, Lore of Heaven. So let's press play. So this is how it begins. Uh, and from the get-go, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Uh, why? I am nowhere, nowhere near as fast, you know, as maneuverable. Uh, I don't have any range, so there's almost nothing I can do against these guys. Nothing. Um, and immediately, uh, even though I have shields, I just start dropping. Look at the health there. You're gonna see some bodies back there. So I use my centigors to try, even though I don't think I'm gonna catch him, or my goal really is not even to catch him. They will probably kill me anyway. Um, it would be to just scare them away if they're skirmishing. Here, um, I do Penn's Impenetrable Pelt. Uh, this is damage resistance and plus speed on three of my units. That way they continue going as fast as possible towards um, his main army there. So my Centigors are trying to uh, run into these archers. He uses successfully, by the way, uh, King Leon Kerr and, and uh, his paladins to come down. But that gives me the, the opportunity to bring Minotaurs and Mr. Gorble number one. And I think I'm going to send this Gorherd as well, if I remember correctly. Yes, I did. So immediately I send, what, you know, can I get these guys down? That, I think that would be a win. I'll gladly trade some Centigors if I bring a Paladin down. So immediately I'm able to to bring him down, and he has to po um, you know, use one of his uh, potions already, a Potion of Toughness. His archers continue raining uh, arrows down on me. Uh, I have a Minotaur at uh, three-fourths health, Gore, gore, uh, gore Herd with shield. Say that many times in a row. Also, um, 
here I use a curse of uh, of Anra here to um, slow him down and do the six, minus sixty percent accuracy to try and help me get this down. So again, he goes right with King Leon Kerr and one of his paladins down to try and again take care of my centigors, and I use that to try and um, and pin his paladin and his king down because if I have if I can take them down uh, this game is over because my infantry will be able to take care of that the main problem it's these guys so my centigors are routing already that was rather quick he's using here the um, a debuff for uh, melee attack and he realizes that my bray shaman of beasts and my beast lord are unattended here Actually, let me pause for a second. There's a lot happening at the same time. So, finally, after a lot, a lot of running, uh, my go herd actually with shields actually make it to the men at arms. So I've engaged here, and look, I, almost as soon as I engage, already wavering. And then, he, so the beast lord is uh, an absolute must-have to have near these units over here. Why? Because he, aside from the leadership, he has a lot of buffing capabilities. This Gorher with shield stayed back for just a little bit, and then I'm trying to bring around, you're going to see they're going to sort of come around like this, uh, this Minotaur unit in a Gore Bowl. Um, and then here I'm actually able to pin down one of the Paladins, which is huge, huge. So let's press play again. So this Paladin is pretty much done, I think. Health-wise, he is. He's routing. Is he shattered? Or, uh, he's just routing, so he might still come back. The thing is, I realize that my beastler is in trouble, so what I do is I immediately send uh, this these three units running, even though I know that this might be a mistake because he might come back, but I send them running because if my beastler goes down, I'm in trouble. I think he notices and continues doing... Uh, different charges here onto the beast lord to try and bring him down I don't think I have any sort of potion on him so I, I just need him to survive so here um, Minotaur and Gorbel actually finally made it onto the line and this is going to what's going to start um, you know closing this deal right here so first um, Wizards Wild Form here on the Minotaurs to do even more damage even though do they need it because they do so much damage but they actually make it here on the on the corner and he brings some knights of the realm but I'm anti-large I have anti-large so that shouldn't be a big problem and then once he starts routing everybody continues routing so what he does in a hurry is try to slow me down with some lightning over there uh, and brings King, King Leon Kerr and a paladin down to try and, and hold his line that is wavering in a hurry because of everything that's happening I think he sort of forgets Oh, here he finally brings the horse archers because he's starting to get into trouble. He's had an entire unit here of uh, men at arms with pole arms after like my five remaining centigors. So that's a bad use of a of a unit, especially when all this is happening. So finally, Gorbel number one and Minotaur number one actually make it to the line, and now I have two Gorbels, two Minotaurs, the Beast Lord that finally made it. Uh, actually finally here and that's gonna just prove too much here for uh, his main line now King Leon Kerm the Paladin are still alive and that's a big problem because he still has a lot of shooting as you can see I keep uh, my uh, Bray Shaman out just for the time being and he's gonna start doing some cycle charge where he's gonna come in and leave come in and leave and I, I'm unable to pin him down um, Harmonic Convergence was up there uh, to try and do some damage and look at the Beast Lord, the Beast Lord is going down and that's all he's going to focus now is can he get this Beast Lord down look at the Beast Lord fly, fly away so now it's a matter of who's going to get who's king down first uh, if my Beast Lord eats it, I'm in trouble because the leadership here is everybody's going to suffer however, I saw again have two Gorbals and two Minotaurs which is quite a bit so he keeps the paladin here. I'm able to pin him down and start doing some damage. Remember, uh, the minotaurs, actually not these minotaurs, but the gorbals are anti-large and the minotaurs are just a lot of damage, period. So there, he once again, he charges in with uh, his king. And the beast lord is still alive. Barely, but still alive. Uh, 
once again King Leonker comes in for a charge and leaves as does the Paladin and really this is all he has left he has some shooting here he brought in some uh, the mounted human archers to try and do something but I'm just purposely just trying to get his leaders down if I can do that this is gonna be a win uh, one of my minotaurs starts uh, wavering which is absolutely not a good not a good thing but again the beast lord is still alive King Leonkor is down here and taking some severe damage from the two gorbals that are just uh, I purposely buff him up with everything I've got and there he starts routing 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 and then he's just going to run away actually no he dies he dies outright there went King Leonkor and now uh, the other paladin is gonna route and then the rest of his army basically is going to route um, thanks to the, to the uh, leadership loss from the general and that's gonna be a Pyrrhic victory for the beastmen when it all started going downhill in the beginning as soon as I pressed play and I saw that line of archers and everything else he had I I thought I was in big trouble uh, but you know instead of trying to pin I use one or two or three units to try and pin some of his ca uh, his captain on his king the rest everybody went up um, because that was the only way I was going to beat him. To actually make it into a melee fight. That's what beastmen do. So anyway, that was the battle. Thank you guys for joining. Let's take a look here at the end of the replay. So again, the Beast Lord didn't do a whole lot. He was uh, far from the fight. So I didn't play him properly. Uh, Bray Shaman was really just used for buffing. The Minotaurs did... Uh, excuse me. The Gorbals did well. In particular when you think that they went mostly against Paladins. Um, the two Paladins and the King... Uh, and then one of them, probably this one here with the 21, was able to make it onto a flank. Gorher with shields, look at this, zero kills and nothing there. Um, the rest you have, they actually, the ones that actually made it to the fight did relatively well with 50, 40, 40, 40, 40 something kills. Uh, Minotaurs, as always, as, or most of the time, MVPs, Centigors with 32 kills. A little bit surprised. I wasn't expecting that many. On his side, King Leon Kerr always does well. The Paladins, not so well. Uh, they usually do better. Um, really here, he got a lot of kills. The Trebuchets, not a whole lot of kills here with 30 and 16. Um, but I thought it was a good fight, a fun fight, and a fight that I think, you know, is... I don't think it was very winnable for me in the beginning. Uh, we were able to turn it around. A lot of losses though, and we barely <laughs> made it through. We actually had less uh, than what he had remaining, but we made it through. So, thank you guys for joining. That's going to be it for this game. Um, do catch us on Twitch for live games every day. Pretty much every day we're playing at least a couple of battles for our campaign. Um, visit back here on YouTube for uh, some commentary, and I do hope to see you again. Visit www.livewa.com for more. Thanks for watching, happy Warhammering, Wargaming, and all of that.